this is Peter from CrunchyGuitar.com. This is David. Um, there's something I, we really want to talk about, which is really cool and really important, which is to say that jamming with friends is the best thing you can do when you're doing this kind of music. When you're playing jazz, blues, and rock, getting together with friends and playing and trying new things out is better than any sampler. It's better than playing with a record. It's better than playing in your bedroom by yourself with your guitar and your practice amp. There's nothing like the interaction with somebody else. There's just something about it. And when you study jazz and get really like advanced, playing different um, standards, your teacher will always tell you, find people to play with. It doesn't matter, just find people to play with. And there's a reason for that. There's a, there's a synchronicity that happens when you're playing with somebody that just, it just, it, it, it extends your playing and it just elevates you to a new place. And um, Dave and I have been playing together for years and years and years. And that's kind of how we learned. And with each other and with other people, it's just finding other people to play with and having them lay down some chords for us and then trying to solo over it and then switching it around and then building a sort of synchronicity and a, a uh, you know, what's the word? Har rapport. Har rapport, that's it. A rapport with each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. A rapport with each other. And um, so we thought we'd just do a little video about how do you do that? How do you jam with friends? I mean, I know it seems simple, but, and it is simple, but some people don't, they, they might be intimidated to call somebody up and say, come over and jam and not know how to start. And the easiest way to start is just to play a basic blues. And if you can't get through a blues, then that's an indicator. You've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to lay down a clear-cut 12-bar blues so someone else can solo over it, and then, then you can switch off. So um, you want to try that? Sure. What do, you have, what do, you, what, do you have anything to say about it? Because I know that you have a lot of thoughts about the subject. Well, um, I guess the thing is that the first step is to be able to just, like, uh, make sure that you can back someone else up without um, losing your place. Yeah, um, right. You know, you're an accompanist when someone else is soloing. And so when it's just two guitars, there's a certain limitation, which is, um, you know, if you're not soloing, the other guitar player, the, the guitar player who's not soloing has the complete responsibility of keeping the, almost the complete responsibility of keeping the harmonic and rhythmic foundation going. And so two things about that. One, when you're, if you're jamming with just one of the guitar player, have some manners. So don't solo forever. Like it's much more productive to pass it back and forth every couple of choruses. Um, and the other thing is, is to uh, playing rhythm guitar doesn't have to be boring. And you can find ways when you are the one holding it down to keep things interesting. Not so interesting that it gets in the way of the soloist, but just interestingly enough that you can um, stay engaged while you're backing someone else up. So it, it, you don't want to you don't want to feel like you know the opposite of soloing is waiting. You know, you want to feel like the opposite of, of soloing is, is encouraging the soloist, holding things together. And there's a certain, you can, you can uh, find a certain satisfaction in playing good time, uh, giving good rhythmic support, giving good harmonic support to the soloist. And if you can find that, then you'll have a lot more fun jamming than if you're just kind of looking at being the rhythm guitar player as a chore while you're waiting to solo. And in fact, um, I've heard really good guitar players say, like, you know, if you can play good rhythm guitar, and you go to it, and you go to like a real jam with like you know a rhythm section stuff. If you can play good rhythm guitar, you'll get to hang out on stage a lot longer than if you're just a good soloist because everybody loves good support. And plus, playing really good rhythm guitar does so much for your lead playing, so much for your soloing. You can't be a good lead player if you can't like really understand the pulse and yeah, stay with the pulse and have your timing be good. And that's why we also encourage practicing with the metronome. But that's another topic altogether. Yeah. So let's try slow blues. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I had just as much fun playing behind as I did playing the solo because it was really interesting to listen to David. It was really interesting to sort of make sure that I was supporting what he was doing and maybe if he felt like playing a little louder, I went with it or he wanted to play a little softer, we backed off a little bit and we felt a flow with each other so it sort of became a, a combined expression. And you can do this with any progression. You can do this with anything. Um, even just a vamp, you know. Someone's trying to learn how to play a Dorian scale, you know, set up a vamp for them so they can play a Dorian scale, a blues scale, or any one of the things that we teach in these videos. Set up a place, set up a way that you can practice behind somebody and try out different things. Licks that you maybe discovered at home. Like, hey, I want to hear how this sounds. Can you come play with me? You know, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, when I was doing my rhythm guitar thing, I made a conscious choice to, like, um, to pull it back dynamically at the beginning of your solo because if it's quieter it gives the soloist some room to develop so I was playing a really like stripped down kind of rhythm guitar part at the beginning letting it ring out but playing really with a lot of just like keeping it and that you won't you won't get that from a record and it was really nice because I felt him doing that I was like ah oh, this is great I get to really just just like lay on top of this and really find something. You yeah, know? you can, you can really set it up so that it's as spare as possible. And then, you know, on the second chorus, kind of dig in more and kind of push it up. And then, like, you ended up pulling it back as we went back towards the yeah. back towards the end of that chorus. So, I mean, when you're playing rhythm guitar, especially when it's just two guitar players, you have so much control over the dynamics, you can kind of help, you know, lead the charge as far as where the music's going, which is really satisfying. And then you can learn to do that with your solo as well. And this will work all the way up to the point where you're playing giant steps with each other. You know? No, we're not going to do that, are we? We're not going to do that. No, no, <laughs> we, we can't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> we can talk about it. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's our lesson about jamming with each other. We have other things to say about it, but that's the basics. And we really encourage you to find some friends and um, play some simple rhythms behind you and learn to solo with each other and that kind of thing. And uh, please come visit us at crunchyguitar.com because there's, there's a lot of stuff there about this. Come visit us. And uh, we'll see you there. Thanks and have good manners. Don't solo too long. Yeah, pass, yeah. pass it around. Like the basketball on the court. Totally. Don't be a ball hog. <laughs>